We're back again, mate. Ewa, 24 this time. Mate, fresh off the back of British Shoot Show, which was amazing. Yep. We are now here for the Ewa 50th anniversary in Nuremberg, Germany. The biggest European trade gun show. We've been here before. We love the place. Do you think it can get any better? Let's go see if we can find some cool stuff. Let's rock and roll. After wrapping up the British shooting show, I grabbed Anne and got on a plane to Germany. Our first stop was an invite-only range day with Beretta and Steiner. Some of which I can share here, some of which you're going to have to wait for. We've got a whole wall of new browning. Indeed. That's kind of exciting. We've looked at a couple of the British shooting show. Yeah. We didn't look at this though. So this great shotgun, as you can see, is a B525 hunting imperial silver. Mm. So the first thing you see is a really awesome engraving. So with a hunting scene, birds, it's, the colors are really nice. I love so the contrast with silver, the French the gray against the silver. Indeed, indeed. Is yeah. it actually silver inlay or is it just a color contrast? No, it's a con color contrast. It's yes. a really good job. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Oh, it looks a million dollars. <laughs> oh, I did wonder, because it's only it's five and a bit thousand. I thought that would maybe be really good value if it was platinum. <laughs> <laughs> Could be, but no. Then as you can see, but the, the wood is as good as the as the engraving. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we exceptional actually. When you see it up in the light. Turkish great. grade four. Yeah. It's done it. So it comes That's delivered done. with five chokes as well. So yeah, you yeah. can adapt uh, perfectly to your I like the way hunting it, situation. I like the way it's not not too skinny and quite well, like a game gun. Maybe it's got a little bit of something about yeah, yeah, yeah. it. You feel like you should be able to put some big bombs through that, shoot some high birds with it, and it's not, you're, uh, not gonna, you're not going to come But away you, you feel day, really the something. browning DNA, like uh, the B525. Yeah, you that's... can feel it immediately that it's... Uh... Yeah. I like that. I like that forearm. That's nice. Yeah. A little deeper, yeah. nice English style. Solid top rib. Uh -huh. That's nice. Nice deep checkering as well. Like when you get a hold of it, you can actually feel it. Quite sharp. Yeah, and this is still hand checkered, which is nice. Yes. Yes, uh, and uh, actually all the Browning uh, shotguns are end, uh, end finished. So basically we have a, a factory okay. where we produce our shotguns, but when it comes to the adjustment of the different piece of the gun, everything is finished by hand. That's awesome. So that's one of the points that gives uh, Browning uh, outstanding uh, reliability for uh, its guns. Does it come in 32 inch? Yes, 32, 30, 28, and so you have also two calibers available, the 12 gauge and the 20. And then if you want to buy a pair, it's also possible, and then you will have consecutive uh, serial numbers. All right, given that you want to buy a tweed jacket with a little collar, you probably need a pair of guns now. I, I definitely need a pair now. So Can make you a good price. <laughs> I'll come and see you. <laughs> Straight after Browning, we headed to check out one of the most exciting guns here. The Kriegoff Gun of the Year. Kriegoff 2024 Gun of the Year. Last year's there was the Buffalo drop, that was really cool. Yeah, so we spoke to Ralph last year about the Buffalo thing. I love the Buffalo one. This oh, is a very wow. different graving. Well, first impressions walking over was like, oh, it's a game scene. Yeah. This is not just a game scene. It's not. The more you look into it, the deeper you look, it gets better and better and better. The dogs on it actually look like dogs. Like, this dog on the top lever is probably the best dog I've ever seen in I think so. It, yeah, yeah. Actually looks like a dog. I can believe it. It's not yeah. cartoony. It's perfect Bellino. No. And that glitter gold inlay on those ducks yeah. and pheasants on the other side. In lead gold with Bellino, so it just catches the light at every angle. But you can't forget it's sat on a Kriegoff mic. I think you put it right. It says, yeah. And the thing you know when you buy it, it's going to shoot well. You do. I you know it's going to shoot well. There's a lot of, I mean, I have no idea what this is. In the six figures somewhere. Yeah. There's a lot of six figure guns out there that will not touch this. Yeah for shootability. It's a world championship winning gun. And it's as beautiful as a gun could be. It's as beautiful as, as, as we've seen today, realistically. Oh man, look at the bottom of that action as well. You've got carving, you've got layers, oh. you've got every style of engraving you could want. It's yeah. just spectacular. Well it done, Kriegoff and the engraver who did this. Yeah, it justifiably has the title gun of the year, right? Yeah. For these boys. I mean, it, it's wow. artwork. And it's, these gun of the years are often artwork, but this is really artwork. Stunning, I like it. If you had to pick between last year's and this year's? This personally. Year's, this year's. This year's all the time? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think last year's is kind of cool. Yeah. The cool factor would wear off. I think you'd never be unhappy with that. No, 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 no. That is another level of beauty. I think you get rid of the Labrador and put the tanky on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So while we're at Kriegoff, 
I'm a sucker for a drill in. You don't see many people who actually have them, or I certainly don't. I would love to have one, right? For me as a keeper, something with a shotgun with a rifle barrel stuck underneath it just in case you need it. For me, that's like the most versatile, useful gun in the world. Like, why don't we see more of them? I mean, maybe you guys do, but I love a drilling. And if somebody wants to give me one, I'll have it tomorrow. Awesome bits of kit. We've got shotgun, shotgun with a rifle underneath, and we've got rifle, rifle with a shotgun underneath. Don't know what I'd pick, which one, but I definitely want one. Awesome. How can you not like that? I'd like to think of you as a manly man, right? But yeah, everybody loves a bit of bling. The Zoli Bella Extra has butterflies with ruby zeal. Who doesn't want ruby butterflies? No, that's very, very different, right? That's the vajazzle of the shooting world. I, um, that's just cool. I don't know what it retails at, which can catch up with them in a bit. We managed to get the gun out the case with the owner of Zoli. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Tell us about it. It's a gun with jewels on it. It's pretty yes. special. Yes, uh, this is, uh, we are introducing the Z-Bella Extra. Mm -hmm. But it is uh, a gun dedicated to the ladies uh, shooting uh, mainly sporting uh, activities. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it is uh, a new model that is following the Z-Bella uh, model. Uh, we have introduced the Z-Bella a few years ago and uh, we have introduced the crystals uh, in uh, the production of guns. Okay. Uh, and at the beginning, uh, it was a little bit surprising the market, uh, but we have seen uh, that this was developing. Uh, and a lot of ladies uh, has appreciated this kind of attention from us. I'm not a lady, I, I think it's really cool. <laughs> I want to see a man's gun with jewels and gems. Well, actually, uh, the first Bella gun uh, was sold also to some uh, men shooters. And I was a little bit surprised, uh, and the guy told me, look at my Rolex watch. I have diamonds inside, and I love this solution. So now the, Bet -L, the Z Bella Extra, it is uh, developing the concept of the Bella. In fact, uh, we have more crystals, uh, and uh, for which we can have in different uh, colors, obviously. And it is uh, uh, related to all the sides uh, of the frame. On top of that, uh, our unique system, BHB, it's also uh, offering crystals uh, That's a nice within. Touch. It's a nice touch. Exactly. Beside the beauty, we do not need to forget that the Bell Extrite is also a very technical gun. It's the same internals as a Z gun? As a Z gun. Okay. So, I mean, all the titanium uh, coated components, self lubricant springs, uh, boss locking bolt, uh, uh, silver soldered barrels, uh, and everything it is uh, uh, adjusted to be. Uh, balanced on the hinge piece, obviously. I look forward to getting to know one a bit better. That's so nice. It's <laughs> so cool. Thank you, man. Thank you very much, John. Grazie. Grazie. As I said, the day before, we were down at Ulm at the MSZU shooting complex, which I had been to, but Ant had never experienced. And neither had he experienced the new DT11 DLC. It's the first time you see me in my new colours, mate. I love them, mate. It, it almost matches my breast rear defender <laughs> and the new DT11, which has got this sick acid green. So behind the camera is seven brand new guns we can't share, but this one's been released. Yes. And I've been thoroughly enjoying shooting this and the others. Because we can show you shooting this one. Have you practiced with this one? Are we going to have a little competition with this one? I, I feel like whilst in Rome or Germany, then we should really All right. have a little play. Okay. I know you'll win because you've been practicing. A little. <laughs> well, well, I got challenged by a Finto competition who then backed out after I had a couple of shots. Well, that sounds like the finish, doesn't it? Oh, surrender. Oh, I don't like that. Not get involved. I don't entirely know if that's true. <laughs> I think historically they're pretty badass people. <laughs> the look of it is phenomenal. I really like it. I know it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea, and I know people are going to go, oh, it's got carbon fiber rib. I love that. The carbon fiber rib is marmite. Yeah. Uh, to the point that I'm go in DT11L for a bit of engraving in a steel rib. Yeah. But it's a heartbreak because I can shoot this probably a little better. Yeah, yeah. But when all the big boys shoot steel ribs, I guess it's just going to be a matter of 
I've shot personal them side by side. I shoot them both yeah. just as well. So personal it's not, choice, yeah. oh, sorry, just as averagely. <laughs> just as, yeah, pretty average game for gunshot. And um, first time in the MS you. This thing is insane. I saw you right. and Ed shooting in here, I saw the videos, and I thought, yeah, it looks cool. But when you're actually in here, <laughs> it's another level of cool, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I don't know, how does that do your depth perception, your, your speed? Oh, it's and... easier. You know, the back wall is 70 yards. So you know you can shoot anything in this room? Everything is breakable. Yep. You shoot 24 gram steel. Yep. Still should be fairly breakable. I mean, we've both seen people break them on that back wall, so it's totally doable. Yep. You just have to kind of look at the size of the clay and no different to if it was an open field, but you've got a background that keeps everything consistent color. In fact, there's way less excuses. Okay. Get at, go on, get at them. Righto. Give it a go. All right. You're the best shooter I know. Otherwise, uh, you describe yourself as both average shot. Is it from? Yeah, yeah, the looper out of there. Yeah, I, he doesn't need to see fun. it. Just I let him shoot it. Okay. He's amazing. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Stop. That's it. Walk away. Walk away. Walk away. You've completed shooting. <laughs> so first thing I noticed when I shot this, it is smooth. All DTs are smooth, but it is yeah. smooth shooting. It does. It moves like butter, comes up nice, fills the face, fills your shoulder. And even you can hit. I'm a, not a big guy. A it fills target. it up nicely. I can hit some. It must be right. great. Oh. That's more like it. That's more like you. I wasn't ready for it. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Well, go for something I can hit. L. We're sharing today with a lot of people, so yeah. we're not going to get a lot of time. Well, I've been in here whilst you've been off gallivanting, getting to know a lot of these new products. Yeah. You're going to see them in different videos. And one of them I am totally in love with. And we can't even talk about it. Hopefully, when everybody goes for dinner, we can sneak in here, shoot it a little bit. Oh, we're going to shoot it now. Yeah, once go. There's going to be lots of people yeah. watching you hit targets. Come on, let's go. Back at Iwa, how could we avoid stopping at our favourite boutique gun maker, Cosme? So we're back at Cosme again. The kilometer, ah, she's finished. Yes, actually, actually, we're really happy, you know, to introduce these uh, new wonderful baby now finished. So it's not prototype anymore. Those are our, uh, those are our two official uh, demos, you know. Yeah. And uh, we are ready to put them on the market. We have already got some order and uh, we are happy to present uh, them in uh, the IWA here. Beautiful. I mean, you were, you were still working on the stocks when we looked last year. So uh, we had that on film last year. We put it out to our guys. Now, now everything is uh, completed, you know. Yeah. So uh, we have like these two uh, different kind of models. The steel models with the steel uh, bolt and the titanium models with the steel bolt. Can I just say, that is a thing of beauty. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. This looks like a workhorse, it looks fun. It's like Beauty and the Beast. Of course, you know? <laughs> yes, it but is. It's great to see them finished, it's great to see them looking out. They yeah. look amazing. Have you had them out in anger yet? You shot them personally? Yes. Have you had any guys out with them? Uh, I mean, uh, I, I have shot with them personally and I'm really happy because they are really accurate. Just to uh, recapitulate like a little bit what we have done uh, on, uh, on this project. So the action is uh, worked uh, in a Cosme style. So it's uh, coming from a solid piece of uh, oh, okay. material, yep. either for the titanium or for the steel. Uh, the barrel are from Proof Research, so uh, one of the best barrel uh, on the market. Nice. And um, uh, in, uh, in the action, they are coming like two uh, uh, pipe, you know, uh, yes, yes. One, one from the stock, one in the stock and one in the forens. Okay. And so these three parts are handling the weapon together. Wow. So we, we, we don't have like any bedding on this weapon and the barrel is totally floating, so it's really accurate. That's Back amazing. to your question, uh, we are really happy for the accuracy uh, proof that we did uh, with, uh, uh, with the boat of the gun. And yes, they are, we, I can say that they are precise. Mike, the kilometer is finished. I... And when I say finished, I mean like, it's finished beyond belief. So come here, have a look. So I keep in contact with Ali. Uh, there's there's a few people in the world who like drink food and guns as much as we do, and he's one of them. Yeah. 
and he mentioned it. And I'm, yeah, oh, come on, man. This is a bit of fine ass gun making. A little bit. I mean, that bolt, 60 degree angle, it's just so simple, oh. so quick, so smooth. The triggers are insane. Yeah. But the safety catch, it's like a fine shotgun. Isn't it? Like the beauty of making it in the factory that makes it probably the hardest gun to build in the world yeah. is that they have the talent to do stuff like this. But that magazine disappears. Like you would not know it was a magazine. I truly thought it was a pushed out mag when I looked at it. Yeah, but just look also, because it's all made in the house, and look at a mag follower. It's the shape of a bullet. And it's, it's just nice. <laughs> and it's not plastic, and it just, Oh. Hey, look, like, I like a plastic magazine. There's a lot of benefits for it. However, something of that quality has to be appreciated, if nothing else, mate. When you're spending good money, if you start at seven grand, this one with full engraving and nice word, I think it's about 15. Yeah, yeah. You kind of want nice things. Yeah, but and I think you get it. I think that's the point, is that, yes, you want nice things, but with this, you get it. In a world full of tactical. Yeah, yeah. I am so glad that Cosme exists so and much. has entered the rifle market. Ready? Oh. So we talk about Cosme and their fine metal work, mate. Right. A gold wing side by side is their latest project. Look inside those side locks. I mean, you've got the same curved long springs as you do in the over and under triggered unit. It's just, they file metal into cool ass shapes. Yeah, they're another level of craftsmanship, isn't it? Oh yeah. And they're saying this prototype is going to be finished come October. And they're not like super excited about how far it's got so far. And it's uh, still not done. I'm like, this is pretty looking, done looking to me. <laughs> it looks pretty special, doesn't it? But, you know, and I said to you, I said, how do you, how do you get to that, Johnny? And you said, you find a genius and you employ him. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And that you can tell, can't you? Yeah. This thing is just... How do you work out those angles, those measurements, that system, and make it look so damn good while they're doing oh, it? Oh, I think that's the special thing, right? Just, yeah. they take what is known, they improve it, and they make it sexy. So this is a fixed trigger group a gun. Fixed trigger group gun. Built with a slightly thicker action than the traditional model. Uh, made uh, with uh, a traditional action and a traditional monoblock, yes. Okay. As well as the locks. It's a standard lock, uh, okay? Right. While uh, on uh, the 460, the one with the detachable trigger, it's a boss style uh, lock. So where does this sit? What is different about the 240 and what is different about the 220? What, the 220 yeah, is for game. Okay. okay. It's and the, the game version of the 240. It's uh, for competition. Um, this especially is made for sporting uh, with a tapered top rib and the sporting stuff. In this case, you have a fixed comb, but because we have to show fix and adjust, but the adjustable comb is always available on all our models as well as left handed. Okay? Yeah, so we we'll, this is something that is always available. What do you think of the look, Sam? Yeah, I really like it. Actually. It's um, it's not blue, it is Saracot. Yeah. That's real nice. It's going to last. It's aero uh, Because uh, the bluing uh, can come off yeah, uh, yeah. quite easily, unfortunately. Yeah. If I was to have one, I'd have the comb razor put in, I'd have the extended chokes on it, and I'd use it as a, as a competition gun. Yeah. Like, if you're in for a penny. Yeah, yeah. Might as well be in for a, a pound. pound. The design of that pistol grip, palm swell into Easy, that. straight off of one of those. Yeah, right? it's yeah. really nice. Big, uh, aggressive. That forend, that forend's like almost real deep but not wide isn't it and it like gives you a, it's quite an aggressive checker in on it so it's really you can really feel it in your hand what do you think i like it i do i love mm. it i absolutely love it so just walking along we'll come past jackal gotta be honest i've had nothing to do with these guys before I've never seen them just notice the guns guns are absolutely phenomenal like the most beautiful thing you've ever seen we came in, we had a little peek, Bavarian based company, making everything themselves. But when it gets really exciting is when you look into the mechanics of how they're doing what they're doing. So I'll show you on this one. So they've got a four way rotating bolt on a straight pull action. 
So if you hold that one there, pull it back, rotate out, straight back, slam it forward, another round in. That's not the clever bit, right? We've seen that before. What we've got is, based on a cocking mechanism to keep it safe, and based on a bow and arrow system, you have to cock it with the bottom finger, hold it back before pulling the trigger yourself. So you, then you fire. However, if you're stood in a driven hunt situation and you pull it back and maybe you don't get that shot, instead of leaving the rifle cocked, which is obviously dangerous, um, you can just let go of the first trigger, the second one won't go off. Instantly decocks itself. I know it's something maybe quite simple, maybe, you know, difficult to make, I don't know. But as far as something that's, that's different um, and, and working together as, as a good driven hunting system, this thing is just really clever, I think. You know, to put that together with a four-way locking bolt, straight pull system, so you cock it back, pull the trigger, rack another one up, you're gonna cock it back again, pull again. Phenomenal, phenomenal thing. I really, really like it. You get to the higher end, and as you see in the cabinet from here, we've got the most beautiful engravings, the most stunning wood. I really think these guys need a little bit more poking about. I really like them. The, the bolt handle on that straight pull in the cabinet alone is just a work of art. I mean, I don't know why I didn't know about these guys. Have a look, look them up. Not only is Ewa the place to see all the latest guns and tech, but a chance to admire the intricate details that go into gun making. Whether that's by hand, or machine. Have you seen a Seiko 90? No, we looked at the early, early version of it. Oh, that was top secret last year. That was top secret yeah, last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, here it is, the final form. Well, there's multiple final forms. This is the Seiko 90 Adventure Cerakote. Big, fat, grippy grips. I like the big, fat, grippy grips. I like the Cerakote, that's cool. I, I also like the racing cheek pad Ooh. and how smooth that comes down. When you it's press that button, just watch this. Just watch, you ready? Oh, like. That doesn't happen. They normally get stuck. They normally fiddle about. Uh, yeah. It's really annoying, right? Built-in Picatinny. Why not? Way better. Like, yep. They want to... I mean, I appreciated the Seiko mount was a good system, the OptiLock. Yep. However... But every modern rifle buyer wants a simple system. More importantly, they don't want to be locked into your thing. And it's nice to lock them in and make them buy your mounts. Yeah. But we're all different. And if you've already got another rifle that's on a Picatinny, and you buy one with a Picatinny, you just switch it over. Yeah, you save a bit of money on rings. Yep. We both own night vision and thermal. Yeah. Plonk. Yeah. It's rings aren't cheap, mate. Like, you buy a really nice rifle like that, it's not cheap. If you've got a good quality optic and good rings, you're going to keep them and just transfer it across. So, absolutely perfect. Love it. What about the trigger system? What's that like? Have we go. Fully adjustable. I think it comes set about, like, three pounds. Yeah, so, it's crisp. There's no creep in it. A little bit heavy. It's I would pull update. Well, it's adjustable, mate. So oh, I'm not going to give it to you so you accidentally go off, right? That's nice. It wants to be nice, though. They come at a uh, a price tag. It's a premium rifle. Yeah. It's simple. It's in 308. That feels like a long bolt draw for 308. Yeah, it's just a medium size action. Yeah. Yeah. I like the little grip, the little grip pads make all yeah, the difference. Yeah, the texture is a very pleasant thing. It's quite nice, isn't it? Mm. You shot one? No. Would you like to? Do you want us to get one? We get one. I just really like it. I think it's quite cool. You'll try one out? We'll try one out. All right. Speaking of rifles, Ant actually got to shoot the brand new BRX-1 a brand new variant of the BRX-1 at the MSZU's 300 meter underground range. We managed to sneak downstairs to the range. We've got the Ranger 4S. This is the one that's going to be able to be connectable, the short, nice, lightweight thing. We're going to give it a go. We've got 100 meters, 300 meters. It's me shooting, so it might not be the best. We'll give it a go, see how we get on. There's going to be a lot of noise. Hopefully we can get some videos, get some pictures of me shooting. Let's see what happens, see how this scope performs. Crystal 
nuclear. Lovely tiny little mill dot. Almost autofocus itself. It's like pulling itself into clarity and out of clarity when you look at different distances. That was 100 metres. I'm going to pull it back in, have a little look. Hopefully I managed to hit the target. If it's zero, <coughs> then we're going to send it back a little bit further. Fingers crossed. This thing performs out as far as 300. Let's see. She's obviously gone high. She's zeroed at probably 200 metres. So then should be bang on, point of aim, 200, hopefully 300, maybe a little bit low, we'll see. But two together, too high. Okay, so we've gone for 100, we're really high, that's to be expected. We're gonna push out further now, we're gonna to go to 200, see how it performs at 200. I wanna see what this scope does. It's up to 16 times mag, gonna pull it in quite tight. See if we can see the picture, right? So it's about. That looked like a bullseye to you, though. I think it might be. Looks like that scope. Doing all right out to 200. Should we try it at three? Little scope. I'm not, I'm not convinced, but these boys say it's going to be capable of it. Let's push it out to three and give it a go. Naturally, we've got a drop going on with a bullet, but the clarity of the scope, which is what we're here to look at at the moment, is unbelievable. This rifle, to say it's a 300 wind mag, not feeling any recoil, coming through it lovely, straight pulls nice and smooth, no jam, no, no problems with ejection. We'll get outside, we'll have a talk about it outside the range, we'll let some of these boys have a go. But from what I can say, this Ranger, out to 300 meters, it's small, it's lightweight, it's crystal clear. I'll take one bullseye, I'm only a gamekeeper. I'm not Johnny Carter. That's just the way it is. <laughs> Walking around the halls of Iwa, there's a lot of nice sporting guns. However, there's a lot of guns that we only see on TV. Just stopped by the gamo stand, didn't think we'd stop to have too much of a look, it's quite busy, and got distracted by a new cocking mechanism for their pre-charged pneumatics on the Rise of Punisher in the Arrow Magnum. Very, very simple. We thought it'd be hard to do. It's not. Yeah, it's just, it could be quite usable if it works. It's something different, right? Yeah. Double action and side lever being, that, that, well, the side lever is the dominant cocking mechanism at the moment. Yeah. Remember BSA used to have that flicky thing that came out and you pushed it back yeah, in? Yeah, yeah. That was kind of cool. And I guess this is similar, given that you are now directly connected to the bolt again. You just push it down, pull it back, cock, 10 shot. I like the idea you come from, from point there just to, Two fingers down and back. Yeah. It's like, if it works, it's a one idea. It's a little AR-y, it's cool. Yeah, 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 that kind of idea. Yeah. yeah. The XLR is a fantastic gun from Favon. I've seen the Palumba Columbus, the Columba Palumbus, the pigeon one. Yeah, us. But I kind of like the Waterfowl Western. I must admit, mate, that's, that's a lot of me, that. I really like that. It's a cool pattern. And I like the idea that it's a waterfowl western. Right, mm, yeah. It's got a raised rib. I was going to ask you about yeah. that. Because it looks bulkier in the action, and it's just that rib that does it, isn't it? Yeah, it's just, it's got a step up on the action instead of a step up on the barrel like a lot of people put, which I guess is going to give a nice sight. Oh, it's got tramline rib as well. This is like the XLR5 Velocity rib. You like that? I think we need to play with one of those. It's a good looking gun. I like the green. It's cool. I'd kind of like to see a green barrel as well. Uh, yeah, like yeah. on the A400 with a green barrel. So that's that's quite nice. I'm not sure about the rib though on this one. I think? No. We're too sporting clazy. Yeah, a little bit too clay shooting. Yeah. Whereas this one, almost like we're different sizes. Yeah. Different see that people. one for me is much nicer. I have shot this. And what did you make of it? Uh, I don't think it was a... Uh, it's a fantastic gun. Every fab arm auto I've shot, of the modern era at least, is epic. And the XLR5 Velocity Clay Gun was something I lusted after for a while and just never bought. Right. It's great. It works. Cycle smooth? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a very... It's hard to say. It's a very good quality... It's not an average auto now. It's a premium auto, really, yeah. by comparison to some of the Turkish imports. But it's a good gun. 
everything about it's pretty solid. But I love that round rib. I love it when somebody knows how to make an auto look cool. Like, if you're gonna have an auto, it's not about looking dressy or too nice or too fancy. It has to work, and you want it to be cool. Well, it's kind of, it's not going over and under that has like this classic beauty that comes with it. Yeah. You might as well make it look like a workhorse badass, and I like it. It's green. It's cool. I like it. Turns out Ant hasn't actually seen the Arco, and I am intrigued to know what you think. Definitely different for Caesar. Take it. It's only like 600 quid more than a grade one as well, so it's not expensive engraving. Okay. It's um, you don't clearly like it. very clay shooty. You don't like it? <laughs> I just think that maybe we should stick to what we know. What you're saying is the standard Garini engraving, which is all very beautiful, is the Harley, and, and, and this is the Strom. Yes, basically. It's, you don't like it. I don't like it, mate. I'm sorry. I guarantee it'll shoot well. I guarantee you that somebody will love it, but it's not me. I love it. I it's bet just you do. different and geometric and better than some cheap scroll. Yeah, I mean, I think this should be a Union Jack on the side, by the way. It's almost close. I've heard rumour yeah. of something similar along those lines. All right, how does this but go in? It's okay. It's, it's okay. It's not for you? It's not for me. It's okay, it's not for you. No. Just look at it. Ooh. It's different. There okay, you go. Fine. You it's like different. It. You don't like it. No. I like it. Fine. So. Are you giving in? We've given in. Yeah. We let Ant play. <laughs> if you get a crow that breaks into your house and comes uh, up the stairs, crow. then you might need something like this. Or you're shooting extremely close skeet. Uh, child skeet. If you child want to get skeet. a young person to a 12 ball, get them a section five firearm to do so. Because you can. It's pretty cool. Is no, it not? No doubt I, it's pretty cool. We're not allowed oh, it. I know we're not allowed cool. it, which makes it ultimately that much cooler. Well the thing is, when I hold a 410, it looks like what you're holding now. <laughs> yeah, this this is actually a short barrel. Uh, I know it looks huge next to me, but it's actually small. Just let me show you with Johnny. I'll pass it over. <laughs> Hang on, sorry. <laughs> oh, there you go. See? See how small it is? It's sprung-loaded in the pump. The Revo used to do that, didn't it? Yeah. As we said earlier, you never know. That's so cool. It is cool. The sprung-loaded pump is a great we're, design. We're never going to need it. We're never going to use it. Need is a strong word. I wish we could. What? And that's it. It's cool. The arms and stubby pump. Cool. M16A1. Q Vietnam movie quotes. You're a disgusting fat body fat private pile. That one? That'll do. You could just show this silhouette of this gun. To literally anyone in the world? To anybody in the world and they'll pretty much know what it is, right? Yeah. That is iconic gun building. Like, it oh, might yeah. not be the prettiest. It might not be the best. But as far as a gun goes, Everybody knows it. It's cool. Cool. M16, the original bad daddy. I love it. Love it. You want to hold it for a bit longer? Yes, please. I'll leave you here. <laughs> ah! Good time, good time. There's a lot of Turkish gun makers here. A lot I, I've never heard of. Yeah, I didn't know Amir Khan was making shotgun. Different Khan. Yeah. Ah, oh, okay. That's good. Have so anything to do yeah. with them before? Uh, yeah, I've seen them. They make guns for other people with other names on. It's kind of interesting. And that's the confusing thing, I think, about the Turkish market is there's a little bit like the Spanish back in the day. There's X amount of factories. Yeah. There's X amount of people who have their guns built in them and they kind of rebadge them. And then there's X amount of other companies buying from one of those companies and putting their name on it again. Uh. And so you see a lot of guns that look very, very similar with a different name on. And that's kind of confusing because some of them then aren't actually the same quality. And how do, you, how do you monitor that quality then? If you're somebody from the UK that's going to be buying something like this, because you've got a lower budget, you want to buy yourself an entry-level shotgun, how do you monitor that kind of quality control? It's got to be the quality of the importer and the quality of the warranty, right? The backup. The backup uh, you've got behind it. And yeah? that's always the thing with Turkish-built guns is they're cheap. Yeah, we know that. And some of them are fantastic. Oh, yeah, unbelievable. And they come with great warranties and they don't break. 
but that's maybe sticking to known names and known quantities with a bit of track record is pretty clever. Yeah, so it's got to be. The and the way I always see it when people talk to me about them is that if you're gonna pay entry level prices, don't expect the world. You want something that's yeah. gonna work, and you want something. And it's great that... value for money. So escorts, mate, right? A lot of people have them in the UK. Had them, had them, had them. Had them. Had them. Yeah. I think this is a location like, point to a Turkish success story. Early escorts, shite. The market were. told them, that's shite. Yeah. They went back to the drawing board, completely redesigned, it came out with new pistons, interchangeable everything. And now it's good. I mean, just look at the quality of finish that's on here. It is progressing and it is getting better, and that's really exciting. But it's also interesting to see that they still make, having that pistol stand earlier, yeah, yeah. things to a price point. So yeah. you can still get something that is less good than this, but these guys who've been doing it a long time are producing finer guns than they ever have. It's interesting to see people learning, actually, and the companies learning. You and reinvesting. Because everybody knows you have the O-ring issue, they wouldn't cycle, they were messing around, and yeah. you had to change them out every, like... They were also £220 back then. Exactly. But, hopefully these work now. But they do, they do. Like, yeah. it's, it's a funny, right, because... In the gun trade, we used to rinse them mercilessly. When people would buy them, like, it's cheap, it's going to fail, blah, blah, blah. And then almost overnight with the redesign, we went from joking about them to going, you know, I'd actually buy them. Yeah. It's a serious contender for no money. I think the problem with the normal shotguns is that we compare them to the brands we know and love and have been around for a long time, blah, blah, blah. What the Turkish people do do is build entertainment for very little money. That's a bullpup semi-automatic 12 gauge or 20 gauge you got there? 12. Yeah, I kind of like the 20. I Did really like... Did you ever watch the film Doom? Right, when I was younger, I watched the film Doom. I used to play the game when I was a kid. Straight out of there, isn't it? It's, um, it's like the SA-80 for sporting. Yeah, but how cool is it? Like, the 14, I mean, just look at it. Like, even just the holes in the chassis, it's wicked, man. I mean, I don't care if we're not allowed it. What's it in? Uh, this is a 410. 410? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I said that. Yeah, it's in 410. Oh, oh, oh. If they made that with a 24 inch barrel and it was 40 inches overall length, you could have that on the side. It's a pumpy. I didn't know it was a pumpy. I want it in a 40 inch long, 26 inch barrel version. Oh, yeah. And then I will take that and I will do nothing with it. I'll shoot it once and it will go in the cabinet like every other gun I own. Yeah. But I do feel the need to go and have a go. Oh, yeah. I think we take guns very seriously. And it took American friends of mine to say, you can just have fun. Yeah. And a lot of us hanging out and just having fun for it. I suppose you can just have fun with guns. And it's really, this is like the epitome of, let's just have fun. I mean. Yeah. When you can't fit enough cartridges in to a normal design gun yeah. that we use, you just stick a load of barrels on the bottom that turn round. So you can have lots and lots and lots and lots of shells. See, I reckon it'd be interesting to do like a challenge to a hundred. Yeah. Double gunning versus one of these with a reload. Who's doing the double gunning? And who's doing the... Double gunning, you and I. Okay. And we'll get someone but... tactical with a belt, but not like, it's not the stick, the belt. Have a go. Because we know me and you are pretty handy double gunning together. Yeah. Under shells isn't going to take that long. No. We'll get through. Oh, semi-auto versus dog. I mean, all you need then is a man. It's a lot easier to have a gun that does it for you than a man. Certainly, if the gun works. There is a load of new products from Bagara uh, that we'll probably look at at some point in the okay. future. But for now, you said this is the one you're going to show us. Yes. Why? Yes. Well, it's the Willis Sierra. It's less than a thousand pounds for an adjustable rifle. Performance trigger in there, AICS. Comes in more or less every calibre you really want for the UK market, especially 223. 306? 306. Hey, happy days, and I'm happy. Go. 270 as well for the boys who want to go on the hill. Yeah. Accuracy guarantees? Sub MOA. Happy days. Two year warranty as well. It's a good looking thing, isn't it? Is. That's actually right. I mean, right. I should say, how about how often you see a bad trigger nowadays? But they are, every trigger is getting better, and that's yeah. wicked. For a factory trigger, yeah. And as you said, less than a thousand pounds. Less than a thousand pounds. That counts for every lot. That's a hell of a lot. Bagara do offer great value for money, right? It's their marketplace. Yep, it's not bad. Quality oh, yeah. rifles for affordable prices. Most definitely. And so we're seeing other brands going up and becoming less attainable. Yes, yeah. It's a good looking thing as well. Tool. You like the yeah. speckle? 
I do. I quite well, like that. The thing is with these as well, that they're not all exactly the same. They're hand finished. So, so this is a custom rifle. Basically, the camera is, yeah. So basically, if you bought this now and no. you went and bought one next week, nobody's going to have one the same as mine. You'd have different speckles. There we go. My speckles are very different, I can tell you that much for sure. That's a wicked piece of kit, I like that. And just like that, our day at Iwa was done. We definitely could have spent another three days filming and exploring. But I guess that's going to be the plan for 2025. Thank you for watching guys. This channel is made possible by our amazing sponsors. You can find out more about them in the description down below. And if you want to support the channel, you can join as a member. You get loads of extra content, well, some extra content, and occasionally we hook up and go clay shooting together as a membership group. If you don't feel like joining today, we really appreciate you watching and subscribing. Have a wonderful day.